Hey guys and welcome to another Pinnacle Performance video. Today we're going to touch on the topic of clean eating versus if it fits your macros and how that relates to fat loss. So there is this mindset that when you are trying to lose weight, that if you just eat clean foods, whole foods, which even the, the concept of clean foods is always quite, uh, I don't know, vague and <laughs> blurry when people, uh, you know, like uh, the whole association with clean foods is essentially something that's a whole food, but you know, if you were to ask someone what clean food was, you'd be going down a rabbit hole. Very vague topic and generally it's just associated more with like marketing than anything else. So the clean eating concept is that if you just eat whole foods, so you know, things that are like, let's just say meat, fruit, veg, nuts, etc., and that's all you eat, you don't eat anything that comes out of a packet, um, that you will lose weight because it is a whole food approach versus the if it fits your macros or like calorie counting approach, which is having a set amount of, uh, you know, a set caloric intake, a set amount of macros to hit on a day, eating whatever you like, as long as you are staying around your caloric intake and you can lose weight that way. Now, I think that there is a healthy balance between both of these approaches. So I believe a lot of the time with the clean eating concept that people are consuming more calories than they uh, actually believe that they are, especially when it does come to things like whole foods. People underestimate the amount of calories that are in things like nuts, sometimes that are in specific amounts of like different cuts of meat that they're consuming, um, you know, especially when we're like looking more towards like fattier cuts, if people are consuming, you know, excess amount of eggs or excess amounts of, you know, people associate like things like potatoes with vegetables and forget that they also have their own, you know, carbohydrate content as well. And so not that once again any of these foods are bad but people are just underestimating what the actual calorie com um, in their calorie intake is and what the calorie amounts of each of those individual foods are but just because they're associating them with clean foods they're losing track of you know what they're actually consuming it also does something with your mindset and I kind of just stumbled upon it then too but you start to bastardize certain foods and break things into categories of like what's good and versus bad. And this is where that kind of like psychology of dieting comes into it. You're no longer looking at say like, uh, you know, food as fuel. You're starting to think of things like, well, this is good and this is bad. And this is gonna have a good effect on my progression uh, towards my fat loss orientated goal, my muscle orientated goal, and this isn't. And it starts to become this very like split mindset where <laughs> you're just like boxing yourself in to specific types of foods based on what is categorized and not actually what makes that food up, if that makes sense. So you actually don't understand the calorie components to it, the micronutrients components to it, the you know the effect it is gonna have on your training. You're literally just like, these are good foods, these are bad foods, these are clean foods, these aren't clean foods. So there is that kind of like psychology aspect that comes into uh, you know what is considered clean eating as well. So that's one thing that I think, you know, moving forward and having like a successful long-term approach to dieting, you need to kind of understand what are in the food so you can intuitively eat. The other thing that I'll touch on continuing with the clean dieting aspect is, and th this will relate to both, but diet fatigue is a, is a huge thing as well. So like people will look at what, uh, like let's just say it's like how I eat or say how someone who eats quite well and look at that and consider that to be a diet. But a lot of the time, it's not actually a diet. That is just the way of eating. You're just eating, you know, foods that work with your lifestyle, foods that work and make you feel good when you're training and foods that, you know, are supporting like long-term health. So it's about finding a way of eating to your life, not a, you know, a diet as such. And a lot of the times when people are associating these as like clean and good foods and, you know, these are dirty and bad foods, people start to kind of like mentally fatigue out because they feel so restricted. So having a more flexible approach can sometimes be beneficial, but there is obviously, you know, adverse for both. So to touch on the if it fits your macros and kind of going back up to, I guess, the initial part, I've kind of like left some notes <laughs> with with uh, for myself here. When it comes to tracking, there's obviously a great um, opportunity to learn 
water in foods. So you're giving yourself the ability to track things and you may be able to learn like, oh, well, this has way less calories than I thought it had and this has way more than what I thought it had or I can be eating more of these foods and that's gonna help me hit my protein intake and it doesn't have as many calories as I thought it had. You can learn more about like the micronutrient content of foods and you can do this all through using different apps like MyFitnessPal, um, like Fat Secret. Um, you know, there's a multitude of different tracking apps out there that can be very helpful and I believe everyone should track at some stage whether it's literally just for a food diary whether it's you know for just like education just like if you even if you don't plan on dieting just tracking the foods that you're currently consuming and like see what can be you know optimized or even just to kind of teach yourself what are in the foods that you're eating I believe it is a very good like education tool um, to have a more sustainable long-term approach to things I think where people take it too far with that if it fits your macros type mentality is people will eat foods that are <coughs> lower in, <coughs> pardon me, all these videos are staying real by the way. Um, lost my train of thought so people will eat more foods that are like you know say hyper palatable lower in micronutrients and it's just keeping them under their calorie intake. So people are swapping out, you know, things like <laughs> sweet potato for like donuts and, you know, just hyper palatable, low micronutrient dense foods. And even though that will still progress you towards your fat loss orientated goal, like if you're eating under your calories, you're not consuming adequate micronutrients. So therefore we're not looking at things like our health as such, even though obviously losing weight is healthy, you know, there's other things that you have to take into consideration, like, you know, your skin and your energy and your focus, your ability to like actually perform, uh, things like your organ health and your teeth and just things that are, you know, also even still like aesthetic, but um, just more important than kind of just the fat loss aspect of dieting. So sometimes that if it fits your macros approach can kind of like blur the line between like what is going to be optimizing your health and progress towards your goal um, and just the ability to eat whatever it is that you want as long as you stay under your calorie intake. So that's kind of, I guess, where the balance of like clean eating or having that whole food approach and tracking it can be, you know, super helpful. The other thing with like tracking is once coming to the like diet fatigue side of things, tracking once, especially if you eat, um, you know, a very similar day, it doesn't require you to track every single day if you are eating like a very similar kind of layout of food. So there is the ability for you to kind of stay more on top of your uh, diet approach as such with an understanding and not be as fatigued to it. I don't encourage people tracking every single day year round. I believe that it should be kind of like set periods where you track, especially when you are like very focused, it can help keep you more accountable, especially if you're working with a coach, having that data there can be very helpful for them. Being able to like on, you know, pass on that data for them to be able to work closer with you. But as much as it can be less, say mentally fatiguing over time, it starts off to be very mentally fatiguing. So like with the concept of clean eating, you know, you're kind of just boxing in like say whole foods versus things that are in packets versus like when you first start tracking, it can be quite overwhelming to see all those numbers and you know, to understand whether you are doing what's right and what's wrong and should my protein be higher or lower and what should my calories be? And you know, this equation gave me this and this one gave me this. So there's a lot initially, but then once you kind of have that baseline understanding, tracking your food becomes quite easy. And that's why you can see so many like, you know, influencers or nutrition coaches or PTs or just athletes in general that seem, looks like they're tracking every single day. And you're like, wow, that just seems like such a monotonous, you know, mammoth task to be doing, but they've just become so efficient at it because it is just built into their routine. They, you know, save their meals in different apps. So it becomes easier to track or they just consume very similar foods day in, day out. And you can also add the, I guess, more fun component to it where, you are more flexible with the approach and you're making fun probably, and exciting things and implementing those and you know, there's a little bit more <laughs> enjoyment to it from that perspective, which can make it less fatiguing. So just keep that in mind. So overall, you want to be able to try and have a combination of both clean eating and both if it fits your macros type approach. I believe there is benefits to both, but having a combination of them together is ideal. So, 
I realized that the, as I'm going through editing the footage for that video, it's cut me off at the end. And I think it's because the memory card ran out of space because I hadn't cleared everything uh, from Sydney the day before. So it cut me off. I didn't get to do my outro whatsoever. And I can't even remember if I touched on anything further, but I hope that this video was helpful. I'm sorry that it cut out early. I did kind of like loop a little bit because that whole video was kind of like top of mind. I was just like, this would be something good to do. I'm just gonna speak about it. I didn't really kind of like script or anything. So sorry if there's a lot of likes and a little bit more stuttering than usual but I hope I did kind of articulate myself reasonably well. And if you do like those kind of videos, I did one the other day on why protein is king and you should be consuming more protein. If you do like those kind of nutrition orientated videos, if you want to check out more product reviews, I'll leave one of those at the end as well. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment for something that you would like to see on the YouTube channel, whether it's a product review, whether it is uh, some sort of nutrition myth or training myth that we can go over or uh, even some more training videos. But um, otherwise, thank you for watching and have a good, it's night here. <laughs> have a good night.